Blind Sight by Peter Watts. This book has gotten a lot of attention on BookTube and other places, and after reading it, I can definitely see why. This has got to be one of the most thought-provoking books I've ever read, and not just in the science fiction genre, but all books in general. So let's get right into it. Peter Watts wrote this book in 2006. He had written a trilogy, I think called the Rifters Trilogy before that, and there is a sequel to this book. Um, he's, I've watched some interviews of Peter, and he seems like a really cool guy. He lives in Canada. He has put this book up for free on his website, so if you go to his website, you can go to a page and just download the, the digital version of this book in various formats, which I think is super cool. Now, the book itself, I'll try to get into the, the kind of plot and premise without giving anything away, and then I'll get into the pros and cons, and then why you might want to read it as well. The premise of the book this, this book has many layers to it, and at the top layer, you could call it maybe like a science fiction horror with first contact elements, or first contact being one of the main elements of this. But as you dig down in, there's way more to this book. I read it, and I feel like I need to reread it. I thought about just turning around and rereading it a second time. I've never done that with a book, but I feel like I need some time to kind of let it stew and simmer and let those thoughts kind of work themselves out. And then I'll probably revisit this at some point. So the book play takes place in the 2080s and humanity has progressed in a fairly plausible way. There's a lot of technology in the environment and some humans have chosen to take technology on. And there's more to it than that, but I don't want to get into that part too much. And then the plot of the story starts with these fireflies drifting down onto the planet. And it's done in such a way that Everyone knows that there's some sort of intelligence behind this, kind of scoping them out. And so the world sends this gang out to investigate. And this gang consists of many different people with different specialties. And I believe all of them are somehow genetically modified with technology to enhance different aspects of their duties, like there's a military person, they have drones, there's linguists, there's our main character who is kind of a reporter that doesn't have any emotion and has the ability to look at things completely subjectively. And then there's a few others and our leader is a vampire. I know this, this book gets a lot of attention about vampires in space and I don't think it's really the way I would think of vampires. I think it's a cool part of the story. It could have been, in my mind, it could have been replaced with some other being, but it really worked. I liked, I liked that aspect of it, but the book is not in any way about vampires really. It's just part of the story. So we follow this crew out to investigate this signal source, and that's where the meat of the book comes from. It, it really, from about halfway through, I believe, and on, you're kind of in, in the minds of our group, our gang, investigating and trying to figure out what this entity is, what it wants, and how how humanity fits in with that. And it's really fascinating. I won't really say anything else because I, do, I don't want to spoil anything. I think everyone should, should give this a read, but there's definitely some challenges 
when you come to a book like this, and I'll get into that in a minute. For the pros and cons, for the pros, there's a bunch of them, but first off, when I started reading this book, there was just this matter-of-fact way that the narrator and the author was telling this story, and they were throwing these really crazy ideas and concepts at you, but it was just like, yep, you know, this is how it is, and I found myself kind of going back, trying to reread it, like, is that really what they meant to say, or was that a joke? And so th that was just something I haven't really seen before, and it, it kept me entertained through a lot of I wouldn't call it slow spots, but there's some negatives I'll I'll bring up in a minute. And and this really helped, I think, the way it was written. It just kind of kept you engaged. And it was kind of comical at times, the way it was written. I think another pro for me personally, horror stories in space are always very intriguing to me. Add to that hallucinating out in space, and you're going to get a bunch of points for me. I just, I couldn't imagine being in such a weird, unique place and then hallucinating to where you don't even know what's real. So that, that aspect of the book really got me. The thought provoking aspect of this book is definitely the number one pro for me. It just, I'm still thinking about it. I, I don't know if I'll ever stop thinking about it and trying to think about my own life now with some of these different concepts that I'd never really delved down into that much. Because this, these concepts, I, I, I'm familiar with some of these. I've, I've listened to a lot of Sam Harris and he talks a lot about free will and consciousness and, you know, the idea that we're just this thing riding around in, in a body as the driver. That's what he kind of talks about consciousness as. But the way Peter Watts brings this up and puts it into this story just opens it up in such an amazing way. That's it's it's definitely the number one pro for me. For cons, this is a pretty science heavy book. It's super, super dense. There's concepts that I was sort of familiar with, concepts that I hadn't really heard of, and I would stop and Google some of these theories and these ideas like the Chinese room and things like that. But I, I took the time. I don't think it's completely necessary to enjoy the book. You could probably skim over, skim past some of that and still get plenty of enjoyment out of the book. But I took the time, I stopped and looked into those things, and I thought it in, enriched the book. Now, the other thing when I talked about it being dense, I think about around page 50, I was talking to my wife and I was saying, yeah, I think I finally kind of see what's going on here. And she said, well, explain it to me. So I, I explained everything that I thought had kind of transpired or, or what Peter was trying to bring us up to at that level. And she was like, wow, you're on page 50 and there's already, like all of that has happened already. Kind of thought about it and yeah, it's it's pretty dense and it never really slowed down after that. There's a lot of concepts and ideas thrown at you the entire time. Another con, I think, if you're not into the horror thing, uh, this could frighten you. It, it frightened me a little bit, but that's kind of a pro for me. I like to get some sort of emotional reaction and I didn't get many other, but I did get some fear and, you know, existential dread in a, in a weird way, but that is another one. And then the, the ending at first, when I, when I read the ending, I was, I was kind of expecting a little bit more. And when I finally put the book down, I was, I was thinking that maybe this book was a little too hyped. And then I 
thought about it a lot more. I watched a few videos. I had pretty much got most of the plot. There was a couple things I, I missed, slight plot points that I think opened the book up a little bit more. And then, like I said, I've just, I've been thinking about this book and researching other aspects of consciousness to try to understand this book more. And now I, I think that the ending was fine. I got no problems with it. It's really such a thought provoking um, experiment in humanity and free will and consciousness. It's, it's really amazing. So if you want to try reading this, I would, if, if you've read plenty of other science fiction and you're not scared of science terms and ideas thrown at you, or if you're willing to just, you know, put the book down and go research a little bit about what he's talking about, you know, go for it. I think if you're pretty well read in science fiction and you haven't read this at some point, I think you should read it. I think it is just very unique and it's kind of a masterpiece in the science fiction realm. I don't know how much attention this got when it came out. I'd never really heard about it until about a year ago. I know it's been in the limelight a little bit more since then, uh, but it's amazing. I, I have the li I got the library copy. I'm going to have to go to return it, but I'm going to buy a copy to put on my bookshelf and pick a time to reread it. And then I've heard the sequel maybe isn't as good, but I'll probably read that too at some point because I just kind of, the more I think about it, the more I can't get enough of it. So I hope I convinced you to give this a read and that's about it. Thanks.